Hi, I'm Sap Nasty. I'm a member of M1A Rifles.com. Today I'm going to be doing a short instructional video on how to take anything that's embossed, engraved, or stamped on your firearms or your firearms accessories and show you how to take it from a plain look like this to a look like this. Now this stands out a little bit better. It looks very professional. It's very easy to do. It only takes a few minutes. Uh, I know you can't see it as well from here. We're going to bring the video in. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step on how to go from the start to the finish and you should have an ending product like this. Okay, today we're going to show you how to do this on a Springfield Armory standard five round magazine. Now on the back of the magazine it has the embossed logo of the Springfield Armory cross cannons. Uh, we're going to take it from a look like this and we're going to bring it to a look like this in a matter of minutes. Now once you've used your gun cleaning brush or toothbrush, whatever you've chose to use, once you've cleaned down the cracks and crevices, you just take a regular old Q-tip cotton swab, you're going to dip it in the alcohol, and you're just going to clean the surface. Just make sure it's clean real well. Now it's important after you do this to make sure you don't touch it at all with your fingers. Um, just be mindful of where you're handling whatever you're using, whether it be your firearm or your magazine. And once it's dry, uh, you can let it air dry, but I like to use a paper towel. Um, just take it and wipe it down real nice, get it nice and dry, and as you can see, it's clean and it's ready to uh, start with the rest of the process. The second part in this process is also another important part. What you're actually going to use is a regular old China white marker. Now you can buy these at any craft store, Michaels, AC Moore. They're relatively inexpensive. I believe I paid a dollar for this one. And uh, you can find them pretty much anywhere. There's colored pencils, markers, any craft supplies. Uh, once you get your China white marker and you've cleaned your surface, you're going to make sure what you're going to do is you're actually going to press it anywhere that it's embossed or stamped. You're going to take the marker and you're going to press down on it. Now when you start, you're actually going to start off by pressing down pretty hard because what you want to do is you want to take that grease pencil which is actually soft and you're going to push it down in to make sure it fills in all the lines. Once you continue with this you're going to do the entire logo or serial number or whatever it is that you've chosen to do and you're just going to go over it. Now once you do this um, you're going to use a circular motion. I find that that's the best way to fill the cracks. Uh, I've tried it up and down side to side. It doesn't really work as well. So you're going to be able to see as you go along that you're filling in uh, lines. Uh, you're going to be able to see what's not getting filled in, what is getting filled in, and wherever you're not getting good coverage, you're just going to push it back over and press a little bit harder. Uh, now, you won't always be able to do this on the first try. You're not going to be able to fill it all in. You might have to do this once or twice to get the full coverage. It always doesn't fill in right away, especially if your surface isn't as clean as it should be, but we shouldn't have a problem with this one because we cleaned it pretty well. Okay, once you've decided that you needed to put a little bit more, now you may have got it on the first shot and it looks good enough to you and you can continue on the process. But for those of you who weren't able to fill it in all on the first shot, which is usually the case, you're just going to take the marker, you're going to find the parts of the lines that didn't fill in well, and you're just going to go into that part and you're going to go with whatever the line does. If the line curves, you're going to curve the marker. And at this point, you don't have to use a circular motion anymore because you've actually filled it already. You're just completing it. You're putting more in there so it looks a little bit better and it fills it a little bit better. So you're just going to keep doing this until like you feel that you've got it all the way in again. And then once you do that, we're just going to repeat the other process. Once you've filled it in, you feel like it's sufficient enough to where you can continue on, you're just going to stop what you're doing. Of course, remember, try not to touch the magazine because you have a clean surface. Wipe off your excess, and then you're just going to take the alcohol and you're going to re-rub it again until we start to get it clean. Once you've thoroughly cleaned the surface, um, I skipped a little part of this because it actually takes a few minutes and a little bit of elbow grease to get all the china white marker off of there. But once you've gotten it all off of there and you've cleaned it thoroughly, just take your paper towel, wipe it down nice, and this is actually your end result. This is what you come out with. Um, it looks very nice. It looks very professional. Um, it looks even better on the firearm itself. Today I'm only showing you with a uh, M1A 5 round magazine from Springfield Armory. All right, after you've finished all the final steps, you've cleaned the surface, and you've wiped it down, you should have an ending result like this. It actually looks very nice, very professional, and I find that I get a lot of compliments on these. Um, anything that I've done, any of my firearms or any of my accessories, uh, whenever I take it to the range or go to a gun show, I have a lot of people ask me where I bought it at or how I got it like that. And once I explain to them the process, uh, they're actually surprised to find out how cheap and easy it really is. Now today I've shown you this on a Springfield Armory standard factory five round magazine, but you're not limited to just things like this. Now today I have, happen to have here my own personal rifle. This is a Springfield Armory SOCOM 2 with a Voltor stock on it and a surefire grip. 
Meprolite reflex. Um, unfortunately, because I painted this rifle camouflage, I'm unable to use this process on my receiver. Now for you guys out there who still have plain receivers, you can use the exact same process I showed you with the magazine, and you can do it here on the back of the rifle. Now all M1A lovers know that on the back of the receiver tells you what type of rifle it is, the company of manufacture, and your serial number. Same process, it should turn out the same way, it looks very nice. Uh, this is my first instructional video. I plan to have a, a lot more upcoming. If you have any questions, send any of them to me on the M1A rifles.com.